All right, so we've been looking at how water uh, moves through the soil uh, and how water potential of soil is going to um, vary across a gradient and that's going to drive uh, water movement towards the roots as you can see back here in number one. Uh, another factor that we'll look at a little bit later in another video um, recording is how bulk flow influences the water movement through soil. So we were kind of reminding ourselves that the, what the water potential gradient in soil might look like uh, far away from the root compared to close to the root surface and how different that would look once the water passes across the cell membrane inside the cell. Um, and then we ended with the question, what would happen to a plant if soil water potential near the root surface had a negative 1.5 megapascals um, water potential? And remember, that's the um, point at which permanent wilting point occurs. So you should be able to answer uh, that by now with regard to what happens with the root. So remember, the root water potential has to be less than the soil water potential, but when this root uh, water potential goes below uh, one, negative 1 1.5, then that's when, or these cells do, that's when um, turgor loss is so great that the cell can't recover. It, it starts to become non-functional. Um, so that's why the soil at, at negative 1.5 megapascals is called permanent wilting point because it reflects on the lack of functioning in the plant. The next um, graphs here, um, we'll start with the one on the left, look at the effect of um, water potential, soil water potential on hydraulic conductivity. And if you'll recall, hydraulic conductivity is the ease with which water moves through the soil uh, or through any sort of medium, um, could even be a plant cell, um, or the flow rate of that movement through. So we just kind of remind ourselves here different uh, values that we want to take note of across the x-axis for soil water potential. So permanent wilting point is negative 1.5 megapascals, field capacity at negative 0.03 megapascals, and where um, if we were looking at a pure beaker of water, the water potential would be zero. So that would be sort of the upper end of the the upper limit for soil water potential. Um, and so it's this range here between field capacity and permanent wilting point that is available for plants. It's basically what we would call plant available water. Okay, water that's found in the capillary pores between soil particles. And so we can interestingly compare that here to the right um, where now we're looking at the effect of um, soil water potential or soil, soil water content on plant growth or the rate of plant growth. So here we're looking at soil water potential effect and as it, how it Im affects hydraulic conductivity, but now we're actually measuring a plant response. And you have the same pattern here where um, the wilt region, here's the permanent wilting point here where the soil water potential is now very low and up here at saturation remember for high water potential soil water potential something like zero over here on the left and field capacity occurring here <coughs> so when the soil is saturated we have very we have oxygen deficiency very poor plant growth uh, in the wilt region with decreasing soil water potentials, the plant growth is declining as well. So it's again in that sort of available water zone that plant growth is ideal uh, or is, is maximized. All right. So we next move to this graph, um, which we started to look at in class, or if this is the first time you're seeing it, it's the um, a graph that shows soil water potential on the x-axis, and we've sort of redrawn that axis here, versus available water as it relates to clay soils, loam or silty, um, well, loam being that ideal soil, or sandy soils. So uh, we'll take a few minutes to look at the effect or look at the graph to try to interpret some of the um, some of what's shown in the graph uh, and we'll do that uh, on your own or in class we'll come back to that all right <coughs> what we're looking at next is basically defining soil water potential and soil <coughs> 
soil water potential is a relative measure, just like we talked about before with, in general with um, water potential, a relative measure of the chemical potential of water in soil. <clears throat> and it's calculated based on some other potentials, some of which we've already seen, osmotic potential, um, plus the potential due to gravity, gravitational potential, plus a new term here now, matrix potential. Now we don't include pressure potential because pressure, the pressure in soil water is like the pressure in a beaker of water where there's no bound membrane so pressure is always going to be zero. Um, so let's make sure we can recognize these terms. Uh, this is again osmotic potential and in soils osmotic potential is rather negligible. The solute concentrations are much lower than they are in cells, so moving from one place in the soil to another place in soil um, is not so much impacted by the osmotic potential. All right, the gravitational potential, gravitational potential, is also rather <coughs> neg negligible in soils. Neglig the spelling there, right? Had it right? Um, and that is also because uh, gravity has little impact when we're looking at available soil water. Uh, if we were looking at other, you know, uh, larger quantities of water, the gravitational potential might be more important in that respect. The very important term here that's involved in the calculation of water potential, soil water potential, is the matrix potential. So that's the term we want to spend the most time understanding. And the, ma the matrix potential is, di is basically um, the result of, of adhesive forces and capillary forces in soil. The interaction between soil and soil or soil particles and the water uh, moving through the soil. So the adhesive <coughs> forces remember are <coughs> um, occur between water molecules or basically a result of hydrogen bonding between water molecules and molecules or ions that adhere or are part of the uh, soil particle. And the cohesive forces or the um, co yeah, cohesive forces are occurring between water molecules. There we go. All right, um, and the result of um, both of these factors causes what we refer to as soil water tension. Soil water tension. So the idea here is that water is being held by the soil water part, the soil particles, uh, which means it's less available for moving through the soil. And so the drier soil is, the more um, those um, particles cling to those water molecules cling to the soil particles. Uh, and for the same reason that we talked about the changing, the changing radius of the meniscus here as drying occurs. So as so the matrix potential is the water potential as a result of matrix forces. And let me write that term here, matrix forces, which become increasingly negative. Water potential becomes or matrix potential becomes increasingly negative as matrix forces become stronger. Uh, and again, matrix forces is that increasing tension resulting from adhesion and cohesion. Um, and the capillary action 
that you know wicks up the sides here basically so we might write um, basically a summary statement about matrix potential and its impact on water potential um, that the higher the tension or matrix forces then that's gonna cause um, a decrease in matrix potential which is gonna cause a decrease I'll write it down here in water potential uh, another thing to note that this is always a negative number All right, in this next figure, um, the figure helps us uh, ask or explain how, basically this question, how does capillary size or diameter, which is kind of how we can look at um, soil channels, soil channels through this, um, allowing water to flow through soil um, affect make matrix potential and therefore affect water potential so in the diagram we see it say uh, of a large soil channel with a large diameter and as um, we move across the the figure here uh, we see smaller and smaller channels soil channels in this the way we're going to use this figure so this this um, sort of cha soil channel would re would represent saturated soil where the water potential equals zero, and the influence of the matrix forces, as you can see, are represented here in the red uh, part of the diagram, has a very low influence on the on the movement of water. There's a lot of water molecules here that can just uh, move straight through if there are, if there's enough hydraulic pressure uh, moving those that water through. Um, so the influence of the adhesive forces is, is very low on, on the movement of water through here. So the water potential would be relatively high, like we're seeing here at zero uh, megapascals. And as we move across, we see uh, narrower channels. And this might be the difference between, say, a sandy soil here versus a high clay content soil here, where the channels get narrower. Um, and as you can see, uh, with decreasing diameter, we have a greater influence on the on the um, movement of water by those matrix forces or those adhesive forces here in the sides of the channels. And again, that's going to limit the water moving up through the middle. Um, so when, let's say we're looking at evaporation, evaporative forces are going to be much uh, stronger here than adhesive forces or matrix forces. Over here, adhesive forces are going to prevent evaporation or just basically the movement of water through the channel. Um, and so this would have um, basically we could write here higher matrix forces whoops move that over higher matrix forces which is gonna decrease the matrix potential and that's going to decrease the water potential so clay uh, ch channels in clay have a smaller um, a lower water potential because of the greater influence of these matrix forces so we can kind of scale this up now if we look at what soils look like when they are um, in different levels of water availability here's saturated soil with a water potential of zero megapascals um, and these are actually listed in bars so we're going to add that decimal place here 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 1.0 so that's going to be the range that we see here that you, you see in the diagram below and then as soils get drier you can see that sort of cracking formation uh, where water potentials let's make sure we add our little decimal points here get uh, become very very dry roots would never be able to take up water in this um, sort of dry bed here so this is remember going to be